Question. Do you need to study business before you can start your own business? All right, so there's two options. Option one, study business and management and strategy and entrepreneurship and then start your company. Or option two, you start your own company and then learn the things you need to learn as you go. In this video, I walk and talk with Virpi Muhonen, who is the co-founder and CEO of Askel Healthcare, and she chose option two. Her company is now doing really innovative things in the field of medicine and healthcare. We discuss what's happening in medicine as technology advances, and Virpi shares with me one of her favorite mottos in life that she lives by, which I really love, and I think you'll like it too. So let's go see Verpi. All right, so here we are at Biomedicim. I'm with Verpi. So your background isn't necessarily, it's not business and you didn't no. study, you know, nope. business strategy <laughs> no. or financing. No. No. So how, how did you find it starting your own company? Well, basically, did you plan to start a company? We didn't plan to start a company. Yeah. We basically we planned to solve the yes. big unmet medical need of damage cartilage. Exactly. And when we kind of realized that we actually have something that could be really beneficial for the patient, so then with my my colleague Anne Marie Haberanta, who's my co-founder in Askel, so it was basically no choice situation because we really had something that the research said yeah. that hey, this is really working. Yeah. So what to do if it would be only a academic paper yeah. or a part of dissertation? Well, that's cool, yeah. but, but it doesn't solve any problem. Anyone. It doesn't benefit anybody. And yeah. there has already been millions of research money put into that. So it's kind of like a bit of waste of money if you don't bring it forward. And there was nobody else to do that. So it had to be us or it wouldn't happen. Amazing. So then we were like, that's okay, let's just do it. Yeah, and that's the most... Just do it. It's, <laughs> it's a really noble way to because you started a company because there was a need for it. You yeah. found the need and you had a solution that you wanted to share. Yeah. Instead of the other way around, which a lot of people, a lot of business students yeah. study business, you know, I got my MBA. Then figure out. And then, oh, I'm <laughs> going to start a company and then figure out what am I going to yep. do. Yeah. So yeah, I, we did I it a bit the other way around. And also there was the fact that when you s we really saw the early results and we really see that, hey, this is really looking amazing. You have that kind of a a moment like hey oh my god this is actually working yeah. and then you think that hey you need to bring that forward and then starting a business feels like it's kind of like you already done the research or you already done kind of the in a way the heavy lifting that you have a thing that can really help people or veterinary patients also in our case so you just start the business yeah don't think about it any <laughs> no longer it's just like you just need to do it so yeah it's kind of like even though we don't have any experience or education on the business side yeah but still we are here uh, we have had the company for two years and we have raised 2.1 million and yes. we already have patients and uh, we have a production line so yes we can do it so what does Askel Healthcare do? we repair damaged cartilage so basically if your knee hurts or your hip hurts and so forth so we are the guys to come to so basically we have created a medical device that is uh, placed into the damaged joint and it creates a surrounding or an environment okay. that the tissue can regrow and basically you have healthy joint surfaces after our treatment. Yes. Tell us what happens here at Biomedical Therapy. Well, in here happens all the magic in the medical field. So this is the place where all research from University of Helsinki and from the Helsinki hospitals are, are done, basically. Uh, this is where the medical student spent their first few years in here and a neighbor, neighbor building, basically. The lecture rooms are here and yeah. some teaching facilities. So when you have the new kind of a year starting you get the what, 120 new students here and they come with their backpacks and oh, they're all excited yeah to become full of energy and, yeah, so they're the best they're ready so, to yeah. do good in the yeah, world yeah, yeah. i was reading a really cool book recently and it it was talking about doctors yeah and they were talking about this research that 
older, more experienced doctors, like somebody you know who's been doing it for 30 years, yeah. they're actually less reliable than the student doctors who just came out. Yeah. Have, have you heard this theory and what do you think? Yeah, I have. Because it goes against yeah. what you, as a patient, you, you think, I think. want an older, oh, yeah. you know, sure, I want to be sure. sure. But that, I think it comes from the, that medicine has evolved quite, quite yeah. quickly. And the younger doctors, they have the updated information. Yes. And the medical profession doesn't require you to basically update your information. When you get your license, you have it. Um. And you can function with that as long as you okay. want. So basically you that can sounds be like something they should yeah, yeah. change. But that d definitely makes sense. For example, in orthopedics, there are a lot of like really experienced surgeons who don't know the current research data or wow. the current methods. And patients, they typically think that they know the best. But I would turn to a younger orthopedics for sure. Okay, Because they That's have the more up-to-date information. I haven't been to hospital much, thank, uh, knock on wood. <laughs> but um, whenever I do go, and I have a younger doctor, I always think, oh, can't trust this kid. Yeah. You know, what does he know? Has he even but graduated? Yeah, yeah, but yeah. now, yeah. thinking about it that way. Yeah, yeah. They are more up to speed, yeah. so to speak. Yeah, yeah. Because you, you know, anyone who's been in any industry for a certain length of time, they probably, yeah. not, not just the knowledge, but they probably lose the yeah. enthusiasm. Yeah, and yeah. Um, and as I said, the kind of medicine is evolving and yeah. technology is evolving so you get new things and one exp example is like uh, one younger orthopedic um, surgeon yeah. uh, had a patient and the patient really had a sore knee and she wanted to have her knee operated and this younger doctor said that no nowadays we don't do that anymore because we, we have data to show that you operate or you don't operate, the end result is the same. So there's oh. no point. It's just physiotherapy, losing weight, these kind of things. Well, that patient went to a private practice to an older orthopedic okay. surgeon with a good reputation who was, of course, it has to be operated. We do this kind of a surgery all the time. Yeah, the aged, the history kind of surgery. Who did she choose? She went to the operation and oh. then she complained to the hospital where the younger doctor worked that, oh, I, I went to this older, oh. more experienced doctor and he said it should be operated. And now your hospital is doing it wrong because I was declined from the operation and it was completely the opposite. So, but what's the result? Was she happy with? I don't know that, that what happened. Probably she might be well, but she probably would have been as it's well, a, yeah. even without the operation. So it's an unnecessary. Yeah, it's unnecessarily costly interesting but people are so fixed on the fact that doctor needs to do some some procedure yes. and if it says that hey you can actually fix it yourself if you exercise and eat well it you haven't been treated yeah oh my and god that's, that's, that's so, so true. bad because you should be more thinking about prevention and staying healthy not fixing diseases that should that's be so true that should be more kind of the focus in prevention yes keeping healthy not treating sick I love that. Yeah. Hey, do you have a, I want to ask one more, do you have like a motto or a one tip that you always <laughs> live by or? Yeah. Oh. I don't know how to say it in English because it's a... Uh, say it in Finnish first. Um, Andeksi saa helpommin kuin luvan. So you get forgiven more easily than you get a permission. So you should, should just do and then if you did something kind of bad, say that I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah. So that's accepted. But if you always go and ask, but can I do this? Can I do this? That People usually say reasons why you can't. That's quite an unfinished way of thinking though. Or maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, but it's kind of like you get things done that hey, just do it. Totally. And I'm if I'm something comes up, then you fix that. I'm a huge believer in that. And I think another way to put it is, is you cannot wait for perfection. Yeah. It's that's perfection is your biggest Dumb enemy. Is better than perfect. That's yes. the same. And just absolutely do it. Do it. Don't do be good. <laughs> yeah. And get started. Starting yeah. also people find it yeah. so difficult to get yeah. started because they wait to get everything right. They wait to have a perfect plan. Yeah. And then it's already too late. Great tip. Just do it. Therapy, thank you so much. Thank you. One of my favorite quotes. One of my favorite non-English quotes. Actually, it's the only non-English quote that I know. I got it from Tim Ferriss, it's German. Alles mit Maß und Ziel. Everything with measurement and goals. And today, thanks to Virpi, I got a new quote, a new saying. It's Finnish. Excuse me, I'm still learning it. 
Anteeksi sä helpommin kuin luvan. Anteeksi sä helpommin kuin luvan. It's easier to get forgiveness than it is to get permission. Really great quote. I connect with it. Thank you, Verpi. And for me, the main takeaway from this video is if you're starting a company and the reason you're starting a company is necessity, like you have a solution for an existing problem and you have a need to share that solution. If that's the case, then even if you have no prior business background or knowledge or studies, you're going to succeed. So I think that's a really interesting thing to think about. That's it for this week. Thank you for watching. See you next time.